Leadership is effectively communicating the vision and systems are tools to help you communicate. Hey everyone, and welcome back to another Contractor Success Academy lesson. Today, I'm here with Howard Partridge. Howard, thanks for being with us. My pleasure, great to be here. Awesome. So for those of you who don't know Howard, he's got quite a story and the list is long. So I'll just rattle off a couple of these, but if you want his bio, check it out. Um, Howard, you are an international business coach. Uh, you've got customers, uh, from across hundred or so different industries across 18 countries. You've written seven books. You've done a TEDx talk. Uh, and your story is quite interesting. You've gone from having, you know, nickels and dimes in your pockets, uh, you know, 30 some odd years ago to multi-millionaire status. You own a bunch of businesses. Uh, I'm thrilled to have you on the show. Glad you're able to make time in your busy schedule to be with us today and to deliver a lesson. Uh, we're going to be talking about some secrets that you got to know in order to build a phenomenal business. Am I right? Absolutely. Excited to share. Awesome. So let's get into it. Well, it's great to be here. I'm excited to, to share with you guys. And you're right. I am going to share the secrets of a phenomenal business. And, uh, you know, my mentor, Mr. Michael Gerber, uh, I had the pleasure of studying under him, who is, uh, of course, of E-Myth fame and became a friend uh, of Michael's. And he's uh, been on my stage a few times. And I learned from uh, Michael that the secret of a business is a system. And I learned that there are a couple more things that uh, go with that uh, that I'll talk about also. And so what I'm going to do today is talk about how to systematize your business, why systems are so important, and the two other things that you need other than systems to really grow a phenomenal business. But uh, Mark, I like to start with this question for contractors, and that is, do you remember why you went into business for yourself to start with? Was it to make a lot of money or was it really to be your own boss, to chart your own course, to have a little more free time? Yeah, right. The brutal reality <laughs> of small business owners' lives, as I'm sure you've experienced working with contractors, is that you feel like a slave to your business, very little family time, business consumes your mind 24-7, major stress, no real freedom. You feel like you have a job instead of owning a business, and your day is consumed putting out brush fires. And I know how that feels because, as you said, I started my first business out of the trunk of my car. I grew up on welfare and I didn't know the first thing about a business. We had $3,000 that we got in wedding money. I got this idea to start a business very much like uh, those of your listeners, a service company. And uh, I, I started building that business. I worked 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And uh, in 1997, I learned a secret that changed my life forever. And, and I learned that the one and only reason that your business exists, the only one and only reason my business exists is to be a vehicle to help you achieve your life goals. And of course, uh, a, a vehicle is, is uh, a set of systems, is a set of systems that, that creates this vehicle, right? And so if that vehicle is not uh, working well, if it's not working properly, if it's not, if it's like the old bomb I had when I was 18 years old that broke down all the time, it's not working very well. And so we end up uh, feeling like a slave to that business and we don't uh, understand all the working parts. So the greatest business lesson that I ever learned was this, is that your business exists for one reason and one reason only, and that is to be a vehicle to help you achieve your life goals. In my book, The Five Secrets of a Phenomenal Business, I outline the five systems that you need to have. And what I'm going to do in this, this training today is I'm going to share with you also the five components of a system so that you can build each one of these systems in your business. But it starts with leadership. You know, everything rises and falls on leadership and the toughest person to lead is who? Ourselves, right? So we have to, uh, we have to develop ourselves as a leader so that we can lead the team. My definition of leadership is effectively communicating the vision. And when you get people, you have to communicate to them. You have to properly uh, communicate where you're going, 
how we're going to get there and, and, and systems are a vital part of that because you can't recreate everything every time. Then we need marketing and marketing is everything that you do to attract prospects to your business. But I can guarantee that you've had this experience and the listeners have had this experience that you might attract a prospect, but the question is, are you attracting the right prospect? The question is, are you, uh, are you closing that sale? So you need to have a sales system. And then uh, fourth is an operation system so that you can deliver that phenomenal service experience uh, without it always depending on you. And then finally, an, an administration system is uh, one that tracks all the stats. Well, there's a, I have a business assessment that we offer once people uh, opt in. And each one of these systems has 10 different subsystems underneath it, which each have uh, a, a, a several parts. And so the thing is, is that when you start thinking about systematizing your business, it's a big, huge job, Right. It's overwhelming, but you got to start somewhere as, uh, as you see the, the name Zig Ziglar there at the bottom of my book, Tom Ziglar did the forward of that book and Zig Ziglar uh, spoke at my conference and I became the exclusive small business coach for Ziglar. I helped Tom run that company today and we've implemented some simple systems in that business. And uh, my um, financial coach, uh, Ellen Rohr says that, the, the simpler you make it, the farther you can take it. So having simple systems in these five areas is uh, critical. And the reasons that systems are critical, I know that, that your audience has experienced this. First of all, it's the only way to profitable growth. Have you seen companies that grew in sales, but they didn't grow in profits, right? They grew in sales, but yet they made uh, the profits didn't grow. Maybe even they lost money because their, uh, their expenses went way up. It's the only way to manage or lead effectively because if your folks don't know what to do when they come in in the morning and, uh, and what to do at noon and what to do before they leave, the fact is, is that it's still dependent upon you. And it, as long as it's dependent upon you, you're going to be a slave to that business. It also makes them uh, perform better because when I have a proven system that's tested and tweaked and I like what uh, Gary Keller uh, says in his book, The One Thing. He says, don't do it the best you can. Do it the best that it can be done. So you find the systems that, that are the best that it, that, that it can be done. And if you make those systems simple enough, you can teach an ordinary person to get extraordinary results and get better results because I don't have to think about it. I don't have to create it. I just learn the system and I implement the system every time. Now, when you have systems in place, uh, one of the biggest reasons to, to have that is a, uh, to have a calculated service outcome. You know, you can get the same hamburger at, in uh, Tokyo as you get at Paducah, Kentucky. Maybe not the best hamburger, but the same hamburger. When you go to a Ritz-Carlton Hotel in San Juan, Puerto Rico, or in, uh, in uh, Maui, uh, or in New York City, you're going to have the same experience. Why? Because they have systems. You're going to get the same chicken sandwich at Chick-fil-A in Houston as you do in Dallas. So the, the idea is, is that so many times business owners, contractors have a super duper employee and they build everything on that person or on themselves and they don't have duplicatable systems that create that experience. So uh, the reason for that is because the customer is expecting a certain level of experience. And the more that you can make it the same, you make the trucks the same, the uniforms the same, everything the same, the process the same, when they arrive on the job site, how they process that job, then the customer always feels like they're getting uh, what they paid for. Uh, the next thing is, is that um, no other way to say this, but uh, human beings do strange things. <laughs> if you've ever hired a, an assistant or a technician or somebody to work on that roof or work on that house, you know what I'm talking about, right? And so people come up with weird things. So what you want to do is you want to take as many decisions out of the process as possible. You do this first, you do this second, you do that third. And if you run into a problem, here's what you do. And uh, you'll have fewer surprises. We'll never solve all the, the, the challenges of, uh, human, that human beings have uh, we're just strange. We just are as humans. And uh, as long as you live, 
But when you have systems in your business, you'll have fewer surprises. It'll be more predictable and more profitable. And if you keep working at it, even turnkey. My com- my service company is completely turnkey, does several million dollars a year. I don't work in that company at all. I don't even remember the last time I was at the office. And some people might think that, you know, that's a little bit scary. But when you have the, the right people in place, you have the right leadership in place, the right uh, systems in place, it just gets better and better and better. That company just continues to get more and more profitable. And everybody has a stake in that company. They get bonuses when we hit the numbers. We just had a uh, another record month, another record year last year, and we're on track to have another record year this, this year. Why? Because we had systems in place. Now, it wasn't always that way when I was running it. I wonder if some of the owners out there can identify uh, if they're a little bit like me. I like to change things. I like to create things. I like to build new things. And the challenge was I would come back from a conference or come back from a couple weeks on the beach and and I'd have all these ideas and create all this massive change and uh, try to do it in a short amount of time. And the, the challenge is, is that you can't create that much change or you didn't effectively communicate. Leadership is effectively communicating the vision and systems are tools to help you communicate. So when you're changing things all the time and you fail to communicate well, you have a conversation walking down the hall or a text message or a phone call, there's no way you can effectively communicate that way. Oh, I thought you said we're doing this. No, we're doing that. That's why you have to, if you change something, you need to change it formally and change it in writing and get it out in front of everybody in the right way. What systems are really all about is uh, taking less of the owner's time so that you can spend more time with your family, so that you can can actually take care of yourself personally, so that you can uh, maybe uh, travel uh, or work on the business instead of just in the business. And if you ever want to sell your company, an investor, someone who actually has money to buy your company, does not want a 24-hour, seven-day-a-week job. What they want is they want a turnkey system that uh, just like if you rent a car, you expect that that car is going to run. You get the keys, you go out, and you put the key in, and you turn the crank. That's turnkey. And the only way you know that your business is turnkey is if you can walk away from it and someone else can run it right? So that's how you're going to get maximum dollars when you sell your business is when you sell a predictable, profitable turnkey system. Now, I want to, we don't have a lot of time. I know these are short, uh, short uh, trainings for a reason, but here's where I want to go with this. I want to share with you how to do this. All right. I'm convinced and I've been a business owner for over 35 years. I've been training contractors for over 20 years. And I can tell you that when you do just these five things right here, when you understand and implement these uh, particular components of a system, these five components, you will do better. And if you keep after it, you'll get your company more predictable, more profitable, and maybe even turnkey. The first one is the vision, right? Where are we going and why are we going, going there? The fact is, is that most uh, business owners are poor communicators. And uh, one of Jim Collins' books, Jim Collins wrote Good to Great, he, How the Mighty Fall, Built to Last, and Great by Choice, and uh, a bunch of other books. And he had co-authors with uh, some of them. One of the, the books that's not as well known is called Beyond Entrepreneurship. And he talked about the fact that most uh, most business owners don't, uh, they they not only, um, it's not that they, they don't communicate and it's not that they can't, they just don't for whatever reason. And I think that we have this expectation that people should just come in, they should understand, go with the flow, work hard. But the what I've learned is that if you don't tell people uh, what the vision is and you don't tell them how to get there and you don't tell them most importantly why you're going there, that's called your purpose, then uh, you're not going to get the buy-in that you need. And building these systems and operating by systems is not um, easy at first. So in that book, Jim Collins said that your vision is comprised of your your, uh, 
your core values, your purpose, and your mission. And I turn those letters around to uh, spell out MVP. Now, that normally stands for most valuable player. And the most valuable player is the one who performs the best, who uses the systems. Just like in a sports team, there's a playbook. There's rules of the game. There's a job description. There's a vision. Win that championship. But the, the goals are get a first down. Uh, get, or get make this play, get a first down, get a touchdown, get more touchdowns than the competition. Keep them from getting a first down, so to speak. So your MVP, that's your mission, your values, and your purpose. And so many business owners uh, today just want to, uh, they want to operate under an old leadership model, which is called command and control. Just do what I said to do. Well, there's no meaning in that. There's no uh, investment in that. But when we understand the difference that we're making in the community and uh, with our customers, I do a lot of uh, personal development training through Ziggler and I run their whole uh, training uh, program. I'm the director of training operations there in addition to everything else that I do. And uh, the fact is, is what I've learned about human beings is that every single human being, whether they act like it or not, they want to make a difference. They want their life to matter. I wrote a book called The Power of Community, how um, phenomenal leaders inspire their teams while their customers and make bigger profits. Every human being has a longing for belonging. They want to make a difference. They want to be important. They want to be significant. And when you have a big why in your business, you have a big purpose in your business and get them engaged and show them the difference that it makes in the customer's life and in the community it's amazing the buy-in that you're going to get. But so many uh, business owners who are using the old model of command and control, just do what I say, show up on time, do your job. What's the fun in that? And get this, in a little over five years, 75% of your workforce is going to be millennials. They don't play that game. See, millennials are all about flexibility. They're about... They're about uh, life balance. They're doing all the things that we wish we would have done and could have done. And, you know, they want flexible hours. They want, uh, it's not an entitlement thing. It's a, it's a purpose thing, right? They want their life to matter. When you give them meaningful work, they'll have a meaningful life. And I'm telling you, that's the key. So you got to have a vision. And uh, my definition of leadership, again, is effectively communicating the vision. So we have to have the vision and we have to effectively communicate that vision. And your systems are a major way that you communicate. So the second thing that you want is to have an organizational chart. And in my book, The Five Secrets of a Phenomenal Business, I have a uh, a graphic of the uh, org charter when you opt in and, and get our free uh, downloads and that kind of stuff. You'll see that org chart in the very first video that you get. And, um, and, and it, what it does is it outlines the roles of the team members in every single business on the planet. There's the, there's three rows, there's uh, implementation, there's management, which is supervising. And then there's directing, right? There's three levels on that org chart. And um, in fact, let me see if I, I don't think I put it in the slide. Oh yeah, there it is right there. Okay, perfect. So, um, so you have uh, the three levels and everybody's a leader because uh, as John Maxwell says, that leadership is influence, nothing more, nothing less. And everybody has influence in someone else's life. And you may be at a place in your business right now where, uh, where, um, where your employee has more influence than you do. Right. So, um, these are the roles used in those five systems. Uh, these are the roles in the business. And so somebody has to do the marketing. Someone has to do the sales. Someone has to do the operations administration. Someone has to make sure that that's being done. That's managing or supervising. And then directing is the planning and working on the business. And of course, what I have on the screen is the organizational chart of most every small business in the world. <laughs> no matter how big or how small it is, that's usually what it looks like. Maybe there's an assistant in there somewhere. There's a brother-in-law, there's a wife or <laughs> in the phone. <laughs> but 
but it's y'all. You might have, you know, I'm originally from Alabama. I grew up on welfare in Alabama, if you can believe that. But but I call it L.A., Lower Alabama. So it might be y'all in there, but there ain't many of y'all, you know. <laughs> and uh, so how do you escape that? This is why you feel like a slave to the business. This is why you feel like, uh, feel overwhelmed. The way that you change that is, first of all, understand the roles. And then what you're going to do is you're going to, identify, uh, first of all, the results that you want. Instead of job descriptions, we call them PRDs. And, um, and uh, that's because uh, we want to identify the result that we're looking for. That's the goal. And then we want to describe the performance. In other words, if it takes um, 100 calls to make one sale, then what's the performance that's required? 100 calls, right? So if you're in that sales position, you have to make 100 calls to make the, make the one sale. And so what you do is you take that org chart and you create a uh, PRD, uh, a list of everything that happens in that, in the area of marketing, sales, operations, administration on a daily basis, a weekly basis. And then what you're going to do is you're going to assign those things to other people. Now it's gonna, not going to match up exactly because what's going to happen is on your org chart, you may have, uh, well, with technicians, you're going to have a whole bunch of guys in operations. You might have an outsourced bookkeeper over here. Uh, you may have uh, people who are in several different spots like you are. And that's okay to start with. But what this does is this gives you a way of organizing your business. It gives you a way to, to see the big picture. And as you grow, the idea is, is that you want to replace yourself on uh, the bottom row uh, uh, in every single column. And then uh, in order to get semi turnkey, you get other people to do the supervising where you're just working on the business and doing whatever it is that you wanna do. And then a turnkey business is you're not on the, the uh, chart at all. And that's my reality right now is I have directors, I'm there for them, I'm their coach and when I first um, when I transitioned my business over the years, I had a lot of misses, had to get back in it, retweak it, rehire, you know, those kinds of things. But once I got it all set and we, we had a meeting every month to just, you know, hammer out the systems and make sure that my new directors were, they were managers at the time they became directors. And so now I'm just available to them if they're trying to make a decision on something. I mean, they let me know if they're going to purchase something, you know, big and, and I can go on our online QuickBooks and see what's happening any moment of any day. So there's a lot of accountability there, but there's also a lot of freedom there. Then the next thing that you do is after you identify those uh, PRDs, in other words, uh, what uh, people need to do every day is we begin to attach the policies and procedures. So for example, let's say that uh, that you have a bookkeeper and one of her uh, on her job description or on her PRD is to make the bank deposit. Well, you're going to, you're going to write out when uh, that bank deposit is to be made before 2 PM, uh, how that uh, deposit slip is going to be uh, filled out. And I don't even know if people use deposit slips anymore. I haven't, I haven't signed a check in I, I don't know how many years, but, um, but, uh, so I have a team that does all that stuff. I, I look at my P and L's, I can pull it up at any time and I, I, uh, manage my business or plan my business based on what's happened on my P and L on the businesses that I am involved in my, my service company. I don't get involved in that at all, but my coaching company Ziegler, I uh, have uh, some real estate investments and some LLCs that I'm involved in and a lot of different revenue streams. But the point is, is that uh, if we create uh, the way, the best way that it can be done, the most effective way that it can be done, and then teach that person to use that system, it takes a lot of pressure off that person too, right? And so what happens is a, a process takes the pressure off of the person, a system makes it predictable. And even if you lose a person and you have simple systems that are easy to train, you, you know how to break it down. Then even if you have a little turnover, 
you it doesn't have to be a disaster, right? So if you think about a uh, sports team, uh, policies, the rules of the game, this is what uh, a foul is. Uh, this is what gets you ejected. This is what gets you fired. And uh, then you have your unique playbook, how you're going to uh, outshine the competition. All right. So the thing is, is it's a lot of work. And the last thing I want to share with you is the number one reason that um, – Small businesses don't grow or do as well as they could. It also happens to be the very reason that uh, people don't reach their biggest dreams and goals. And that's what I call FTI, failure to implement. Even when you know what you, you, you know what to do, you just don't do it for a lot of reasons. You feel overwhelmed. You feel stressed. You don't have, uh, really, it comes down to belief. You don't really believe that you can reach that goal. You don't believe that you can find that right person. You don't believe that the, the effort is going to be, the reward's going to be worth the effort. So there's a lot of different reasons that we fail to implement. I'm writing a whole book on that right now. I'm, I'm just I'm almost done. I'm done with the manuscript, but I'm, I'm just tweaking it. I'm going to work on it for a couple more weeks and then send it off to the, the, uh, the publisher but I wrote a whole book on this and I outlined eight principles of implementation, eight principles of phenomenal performance. And uh, we suffer from it every day. So another reason to have leadership, to have the right people. If you, if you hire the wrong people, it doesn't matter how many systems you have. If they're not willing to use those systems, right? The first act of leadership is, is attracting the right people. And as uh, Patrick Winchoni, a good friend of mine, says, uh, he's an author, he says, you're looking for people who are humble, hungry, and smart. In other words, they, they, uh, they are servants, They're, they have servant hearts, and uh, they uh, aren't full of, full of themselves. They're willing to change. They're willing to do it your way. But they're smart. They're people smart. They know people. And then uh, they are uh, hungry, right? So he has this assessment where you could, uh, you could be hungry, but not humble. You could be hungry and smart, but not humble. That person's going to get you in trouble. You could, be, you could be humble and smart, but not hungry. And you're not going to perform very well. So you got to have all three of those. And then we have those systems. When you, when you have the right people on board, you have the right leadership in place, then your team will begin to help you implement, to build those systems. And eventually, when you get turnkey, they'll implement for you. So uh, how do you overcome FTI? Number one, you got to stay inspired and believe that you can reach those biggest dreams and goals. Number two, you got to get yourself, your team, your, your, your company organized. Number three, is uh, most small business owners are never properly trained in marketing or sales or systems or um, accounting or leadership. You don't have to do it. You don't have to know everything about it, but you need to know enough about it to know when it's working well and when it's not. And then finally, the biggest thing that's going to change everything about implementation is something I call community. That's why I wrote the book, The Power of Community, because uh, the people around you will influence your performance more than anything else. So the question is, who are you hanging around? Are you hanging around positive thinkers? Are you hanging around people who are successful in the area that you want to be successful in? Do you have the right coaching team? And that's where uh, coaching and all that uh, come into play. And as you said, uh, we've got clients in over 100 different industries in 20 different countries. And what I've seen is that when they simply start to implement the right system, then all sorts of great things happen. Well, Howard, that was, uh, that was a pretty awesome lesson. And I love that, you know, everything you've shared at the end of the day, it seems like it all boils down to us, right? Uh, you know, like you said, we don't effectively communicate. We play these, these games, you know, back and forth in our own minds about where our business is not where we want it to be. Yeah. And oftentimes it's because 
everything is going on in here and we're just not effectively getting it out there, communicating, put those, putting those systems in place. And I think a lot of people listening to this are going to be somewhat envious of, you know, the position you're in now. Uh, the fact that you've got a service business that runs on its own along with a couple other businesses. But at the end of the day, you made reference to the fact that this didn't happen overnight and that right. you yourself had to really focus on making those key hires, putting those right systems and training and sometimes starting over and really getting that system right. So that when you look at that org chart, you're slowly but surely eliminating you from the equation. And I think that's uh, that's exceptional. That's really cool. Well, I have uh, two things to say about that. Number one, don't be envious. Just get even. Yeah. Because <laughs> I mean, you can do it. Uh, number two, uh, people that say, man, I'd love to be where you are. The question is, would you love to do what I did? And probably not because uh, I worked very hard. I went through a lot of sacrifice. But the nice thing is because of programs like yours, uh, see, I didn't go out and get all this information, right? I started growing and doing better when I started educating. I mentioned one of the four keys to implementation is training. I started training myself in systems and marketing and getting coaches and mentors and things like that. So uh, don't work hard, just work smart. You can do this. You got to believe first. You got to get yourself organized and train and get yourself around the right people and anybody can do it. Well, that's awesome, Howard. I appreciate you uh, once again, taking the time to put this lesson together. Academy members are gonna get a lot of value from this. And uh, if anyone wants to reach out and learn more about you, know, you, the organization, your programs, where should they head? Howardpartridge.com, very simple, howardpartridge.com. I'm not hard to find online. Okay, my friend. Well, thank you, Howard. Appreciate your time today. All right, thank you, Mark. Thanks, everybody. 